Take a good close look at this lettuce and arugula and mustard and radishes. There's hardly an insect hole to be seen. The leaves are beautiful. And I accomplished these beautiful plants using organic pest control. Join me today as I share with you seven of the most common and most effective organic ways to control pests in your garden. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I'm an organic gardener. And organic gardening means different things to different gardeners. But for me, it means working with nature, using non-hazardous methods to grow the best plants that I can. When it comes to the insect pests in my garden, I use Integrated Pest Management, IPM. And it uses a combination of biological methods, mechanical methods, cultural methods, and even chemical methods to deal with those pests. And so by using a combination of different things, I don't have that many pest problems in my garden. And the few that I do can be easily managed. Like with these plants that I showed you at the beginning. The first thing I do to help keep the pests away from my garden is erect a barrier. And this is just a mesh fabric. It's often called a row cover. And I put this cover over these cattle panel hoops right after I sow the seeds. And so when those seedlings emerge, well, no insects can get to those plants to eat them. And as they grow, no insect pests can get to the plants and leave disfiguring holes or worse yet, diseases. This is one of the easiest methods to keep your plants safe from pests. It's important that you cover all the way to the ground so that you don't have insects crawling underneath. But by just putting up a simple barrier, you might be surprised at how effective it can be to keep your plants from being eaten. A barrier like a row cover works great for those plants that you're growing where you're not going to be harvesting the fruit. So for the lettuce and the mustard and the arugula and the radish and the spinach and the chard and all the root vegetables. I don't worry about pollinators reaching those plants because I don't care about the pollination. I'm harvesting a non-flower and non-fruit of the plant. But for those plants that I want to harvest the fruit, like these eggplants, putting a cover over it isn't going to be effective. It'll keep the insects away, but it'll also keep those important pollinators away. So I'll use the same hoop system as I trellis these plants. But in the meantime, I'll use some traps. In this case, it's the yellow sticky traps, and they're all pretty much the same. I got these bigger ones because I can actually cut them in half. I use the lower half without holes to stick into the little holder close to the ground, and I use the top portion with holes to hang from my trellis. The sticky traps come with paper on both sides. You want to avoid touching the actual sticky material if you can avoid it. So I'll peel back both sides. Then I'll go ahead and take the stand that these come on and put it in place. And then continue peeling off And then it's ready to put into the soil. So I place it near the plants that might be susceptible to some pests and it's all ready to go. And it's a similar process if you want to hang the trap. And so I'll use the twist tie for this one and just hang it from my cattle panel trellis here. Secure it in place. Give the wire a twist just to help stabilize it a little bit. And then finish by peeling off the paper. 
And that's all ready to go for flying insects. There are a number of different traps you can use to deal with the insect pests that you have. These sticky traps work because they're yellow, and a surprising number of insect pests are attracted to the color yellow. And so in no time at all, these are going to be covered by a lot of those little flying insects. When they're covered and there's no more space for a pest to land, it's time to replace these sticky traps. And depending on the specific pest, you can get traps like this in different colors because other insects might be attracted to the color red. And some of those traps may also use pheromones. That's often the type of trap that you'll see around fruit trees. And then once the insect pest is in that trap, it's not infecting or affecting your plants anymore. For crawling pests, you might think about using something like diatomaceous earth, which you just sprinkle across the ground and on your plants. And this is very effective at controlling slugs and millipedes and cockroaches and ants and mealybugs. It's a fascinating product and all natural. It's made from diatomes. And a diatome, hence diatomaceous earth, is a fossil of a single-celled sea creature. Well, these little fossils that number in the billions for us feel nice and powdery. But to those pests, it's like razor wire. It has all kinds of really sharp edges that will tear apart their exoskeletons, causing their bodily fluids to leak out and also causing them to dry up. It's a great way to kill those pests. It doesn't kill them right away. It may take a few days, but it's quite effective. And unless you breathe it in, it's not harmful. It can cause some damage in the lungs, but you can buy it in food grade because some people will actually ingest this to help clean out their system a little bit. The diatomaceous earth does not last for a long period of time. When it blows away or when it's rained on, it loses its effectiveness. It's got to be dry and it has to be in a spot where that insect pest will crawl across it so that it can do its lethal damage. One of the biggest problems with diatomaceous earth is that it's an indiscriminate killer. It doesn't know what kind of insect is crawling across it and being ripped to shreds. It could be a beneficial insect. To avoid damaging any of the beneficial insects and to target those pests that are eating your plants, you might want to turn to Bt, Bacillus thuringiensis. This is a biological control method for those insects that will be eating the plants. It's bacteria. It's a bacteria that you put on the leaves, the top and the bottom, and when that insect ingests the leaf, they ingest the bacteria. And then the bacteria produces a toxin that totally disrupts the system. It's very effective for caterpillars. And the caterpillar ends up starving to death on your plant. One day it's eating everything, then it ingests some Bt, and the next it's not eating anything. It may take a few days for the insect to die, but it's relatively fast acting as to stopping that insect from eating the plant. Now, Bt comes in a number of different brand names, and there's a number of different types of Bt, depending on what kind of pest you're trying to control. You can get Bt that is effective against mosquitoes, in addition to the Bt that is so effective against caterpillars. As a biological control that targets the bad bugs and not the good bugs, Bt is hard to beat. Another way to deal with those insects that are eating your plants is with neem oil. This is a chemical control that comes from the neem tree. And when you spray this oil on your plants, it can do a couple different things. As an oil, if you happen to spray it on the insect, well, it might smother it so that it suffocates and dies. If it's on the leaf and the insect crawls across it or ingests it, it totally screws up that insect's hormones and it forgets to eat. It forgets to mate. It basically just wanders around on your plant until it dies. 
It's pretty effective at controlling the little insects that are eating your plants. It can harm some beneficial. So I actually prefer to use neem oil indoors on house plants where I don't have many beneficial insects, but some of those harmful plant eating bugs might show up. This can be an effective way to deal with those insects inside. When you apply it outside, well, the rain and the wind can dissipate its effectiveness. So you will need to reapply it. But as an all natural way to deal with some of those harmful plant eating insect pests, neem oil can be a good option. My favorite way of dealing with pests is by using mother nature, its own natural biological controls, like this larva right here. It's a ladybug larva. It's like this one on the other side. And they are voracious eaters of some of those little insects, like aphids on this plant. This shrub is just outside my main garden area. And when I saw a few days ago that it was infected by aphids, I did nothing. I just let it go. It wasn't impacting any of the other plants in my garden. And I had already seen some ladybugs starting to appear on some of the weeds and other plants around my main vegetable garden. Well, in no time at all, those ladybugs discovered this plant and laid eggs and the larvae are just going nuts. There are dozens and dozens of those little ladybug larvae on this plant. And as I walked here, I was met with ladybugs flying away and ladybugs flying to this plant. And now those ladybugs are going out to the rest of my garden. So this one plant with its aphid infestation has dramatically increased the ladybug population within the rest of my garden. And that's why this is my favorite method, because if I can allow a plant on the outskirts of my garden to be infested and then bring in the ladybugs, well, those ladybugs can go to the rest of the garden and prevent this problem from ever occurring. I attract the beneficial insects by growing as diverse a population of plants as I can. The grasses, the bushes, the trees, the weeds, all of the plants that can be attractive to beneficial insects. And then when I see some of the aphids and those bad bugs show up around the edges, I let them go, as I just described, so that the good ones will come in. But I do acknowledge, I recognize that when you have an infestation in your garden of the bad bugs, of those aphids on plants you don't want eaten, you have to deal with them. And in addition to all the methods so far, one of the best ways to deal with those bad bugs is with a strong stream of water. When I see a few aphids or whatever the other problem insect is, I can just get right on the plant and spray it off. A stream like this is usually enough to knock those little pests off the leaf and onto the ground. A strong spray of water involves no chemicals, no biological agents. It's extremely easy and it can be very effective, especially against the really small insect pests like aphids and spider mites. This will knock them off the plant and they probably won't survive the fall. If they do survive the fall, well, they're probably going to be damaged and unable to crawl back to the plant, even if they know where the plant is. And that opens them up for predators that are existing on the soil surfaces. So this is one of my favorite ways to deal with a few pests when I first see them show up on my plants. By using a combination of just these seven control methods, I can deal with just about all of my pest problems. That's the beauty of integrated pest management, is I can pick one or choose two or combine three or four to deal with any infestations that I have. I do have a video that explains more about integrated pest management. And it's popping up now. I suggest you watch it next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. <music>